Marty McFarlane again, 1020 Hell Street. I'm one of those lucky people that have two lots that are adjacent to each other. I did a rough count from looking at the MPO overlay, and based on the rough sizing on here, uh, there is approximately 30 to 32 lots that are 100 by 150, roughly 15,000 square feet. Thank you. Commissioner Bryan, any additional questions or comments? No, that was it. Great, thank you, sir. Uh, we've we've had the we've had the question answered, so we're going to continue. My lot is one that's twice the size, and it's more than twelve thousand square feet. Great, thank you, Commissioner Satterfield. No, uh, Commissioner Hornbuckle. I just have a few comments. Uh, it, it this is always is it's a con something here. It's, it's a difficult decision for us to make, but more I just hate to see how it divides the neighborhood, and I can see that this has happened here. But then again, I look, I have a lot of memories of West Durham. My grandmother lived on Inglewood. My uncle was an old Durham policeman that lived on Alexander Avenue, used to coach ball down there at Monkey Bottom, played many games down there. But I, I, I'm in total agreement that uh, with the gentleman, you know, that I think some of this needs to be addressed to city council and county commissioners. The tax rates are ridiculous, and I'd, I'd be a bit upset too if I had property there in West Durham and I wanted to sell it or, you know, take some of these houses down and, and replace it with something a little larger and, and just more restrictions on it. I, I think there's enough in place as it is now that there doesn't need to be any more uh, existing ordinances put in place with more restrictions. So I, I'm, I'm totally going to be on, in opposition to this. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Gibbs? Uh, and thank you, Commissioner Hornbuckle. I I won't belabor the issue, uh, but I, that's where I come down. Uh, it, I would like to leave you folks with this thought. You are neighbors. Uh, I'm not one that's going to be swayed by what percentage is for, what percentage is against, unless you can have a voting booth set up, uh, that doesn't matter to me because there, there is no way other than a process like that that this, uh, a bottom line can be reached. But even at that, uh, I think the, the existing zoning works well. I took it upon myself twice to ride around the neighborhood and I, I, do, I don't know who the owners were. I didn't want to know who the owners were. I just wanted to get a feel for the neighborhood. I didn't come across anything that was overbearing. Uh, there is a big difference in the west, the west end of, uh, uh, gosh, I can't even think of the name of the street now, but it's where the small lots are. When you come back up toward Ninth Street, uh, the lots get, and the houses get a little bigger, but nothing was overbearing. Uh, there were, it, it mixed in well with some of the existing big houses. Uh, so I, I, I'm going to support the uh, existing zoning. Uh, and you should, there are, other ways to preserve the history of this area. And I encourage you to do those, those things, to do it. You don't need a directive from, from the city, the county, or whatever. Uh, just amongst yourselves and, and other supporters, uh, maybe you could buddy with the White Cylindale people. Anyway, that's all, thanks. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Williams. Yeah, I have uh, several comments about this particular issue as it relates to the concern of affordable housing. And as we talk about affordable housing, we talk about density. Currently, it costs us $150 per square foot to build a 2,000 square foot home. That's $285,279 for one home. Um, the average existing home there is about 1,300 square feet, one story, brick built, which means you have to compromise on a, f a few things. 
excuse me, I'm very passionate about this because eventually I will be losing my home for a future land use map. So I have concerns that this issue has been made about affordable housing, and it's not. This is a control issue. This is about who wants to control what, when, and how. I respect the right of those that pay taxes that want to do what they want to with their land. But I also respect the right of neighbors that don't want to have accessory dwelling units where they can't enjoy their backyards because people live above them now and can look down. Um, they pay property taxes too. So I think a compromise has to be had and unfortunately, this very strong issue is before the city government because you guys could not compromise. And I feel like right now, I'm against overbearing properties, not in its entirety of the NPO as is written. I do believe it needs to be revisited greatly. Um, I think that as we talk about trees and tree preservation, um, it was addressed in terms of not necessarily just planting a, planting a tree, but trees were concerned with overpaving of backyards to make room for 1,500 square foot properties um, as it relates to a parking garage and an overhead unit. At 1,500 square feet, that's $150,000 for that particular unit, $3,500 per year, which would make the rent $291.66 a month. How many people in here actually think that you're going to charge that for that particular property? I would think it would be upwards of four times that. So let's not talk about affordable housing and density. Let's just make this about how we can coexist in Durham, which is my city, born and raised. Let's figure out how to get this done in the best interest of everyone here. That is my comment. Thank you. Any additional comments? Commissioner Satterfield. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to point out that the um, MPO is an important tool. I think it exists for a reason. And despite um, some of the concerns, reservations, I respect everybody who's spoken here tonight to express those. I think what we're looking at here is a neighborhood that feels like it's under siege and increasingly under siege. And I think it's important for the stability of Old West Durham um, and for the strength of the community, even though there's conflict today I'm hoping that that's not always going to be the case, that they need some tool like this that they can put in place to make sure that Old West Durham remains the unique community that it is now and for generations to come. So I'm going to be in favor of this. Thank you. Any additional comments from any of the commissioners? Commissioner Bryan, I would like to go ahead and make a motion that and, we move and, case. Yes that we move case number TC1800001, Old West Durham NPO, forward with a favorable recommendation. I'll second, second the motion, but um, as it's presently written, I think it needs more work. So if we're going to move it as it's presently written, I will be voting against it. <coughs> I would prefer if we can find a way to either defer it or even send it back to let them work on it some more. I don't know if that's possible. And if staff would like to comment on that, that's fine. Right, because I'm willing to withdraw the motion provided, you know, there's an opportunity to do some additional work because it, it definitely need some additional work. Let, let's hear from staff, because Commissioner Bryan, I'm not even sure you actually seconded that motion. With, I with did your... second it, and I will withdraw my second. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> Mr. Bryan, because this is a text amendment and a zoning change, the UDO requires that you either um, vote on it or con continue the item uh, mm. within 90 days. We would strongly recommend that you vote on it tonight. 
It has been communicated to us by the Old West Durham Neighborhood Association Board, and they are welcome to correct me if I'm wrong, that they feel that they are kind of at the best compromise they can reach at this point, and there's not much more that they can do. Is that a fair assessment from someone from the board? Well, at this point, then Commissioner Brian. Oh, Busby. <laughs> Busby, I'm sorry. I kind of like a, Commissioner Brian. It's, been a, it's very it's been informal. A long, it's been a long evening, yes. Do we not want to get a response from Old West uh, Association? Or I, I, you know, I believe at this point okay. we've, we've been here, and it, it, is, it is time for us to right. make our recommendation. Uh, Commissioner Hyman. Commissioner Busby. Um, I'd like to make a motion that we move case number Z1800002. TC. The text amendment first? Yes. You have to do both? We have to do the text amendment first. Okay, text amendment first. Yes. Case number TC1800001, Old West Durham NPO, forward with a favorable recommendation. Second. Properly moved and seconded. We will have a roll call vote. Commissioner Alturk. Yes. Commissioner Bryan. No. Commissioner Satterfield. Yes. Commissioner Harris. No. Commissioner Hyman. No. Uh, Chair Busby. Yes. Commissioner Hornbuckle. No. Commissioner Gibbs. No. And Commissioner Williams. Yes. Motion fails five to four. And we will still have a motion on the zoning map change. Uh, Chair Busby, I'd uh, like to make a motion that we move item Z1800002 Old West Durham NPO forward with a favorable recommendation. Second. Properly moved and seconded. We will have a roll call vote as well. And I just wanted to correct for the record, the motion passes four to five. No, 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 oh, no, no, four. four to five, sorry. Right. So it the, fails. failed. It was, and, and for clarity and the staff, make sure I have this right, and then we will vote on the, the zoning motion. This motion will be sent forward to the city council with a four to five vote against so we are the 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 recommendation is to deny when this comes to the city council it still moves forward regardless we're an advisory body only and we'll have the opportunity to make comments for the city council just like all of you and i encourage all of you to stay very active and engaged on this issue as i know you will is, is that accurate staff great thank you so we have a, a second motion on the zoning case it was properly moved and seconded and we'll have a roll call vote please Commissioner Alturk. Yes. Commissioner Bryan. No. Commissioner Satterfield. Yes. Commissioner Harris. No. Commissioner Hyman. No. Commissioner Busby. Yes. Commissioner Hornbuckle. No. Commissioner Gibbs. No. And Commissioner Williams. Motion fails four to five. Great. Thank you all very much. We appreciate your time and for staying this late. Uh, commissioners, we are almost finished. Uh, we don't have any unfinished business, and I don't believe there is any new business, but I do want to give uh, the staff an opportunity to speak. Uh, Commissioner Bryan. We might want to wait just a second or two to let people leave so we can be heard. Yes, that's fair. Just, just ask them to clear the, the room. Yeah. And if folks can head outside, and we actually have to still finish business this evening, so if you can head out and you can speak out in the lobby, that would be appreciated. They said it passed four or five. Oh, oh, okay. All right. So I got confused reading the closed caption. Right. <laughs> yeah, there was some confusion in there. Uh, I used your mic in the debate because it was easy to lean this way and not. Understood. Why is this one red? Yes, yes, you did. No, now it's green. I don't know. What affects it? What doesn't affect it? And somehow we've got to get a handle 
on the market. Right? So, I'll recognize Commissioner Bryan. Again, if folks can head out into the lobby, please, we'd appreciate it. I, I would like to make a comment about the uh, uh, MPO and the Planning Commission. Uh, when Tuscaloosa Lake Park was due to come through, the Planning Commission did receive a briefing some months before it came to us that helped us get familiar not only with what an MPO was, but with what was going on with Tuscaloosa Lake Park, what some of the issues were. Right. And I thought that was very helpful. I know I visited out there several times and spent time talking to people. Whether I had any impact on what they came out with, I, I doubt. But still, I think that had we <coughs> been briefed on Old West Durham sometime in advance, we may have been able to interact more with uh, the neighbors and maybe given them some advice, and we may have seen something different. Uh, end of comment. Great. Thank you, Commissioner Bryan. If, again, if folks could head into the lobby, please. We're still conducting public business, and we can't hear each other. Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, while they're making noise, could I make a comment? You may, Commissioner relative Gibbs. Relative to what he yeah. was just talking about. Can you uh, get, yeah, get up to the microphone? Because uh, I did. Yeah, I Can you hear me now? Yep. Uh, is there... I wish, I, I'm just going to make a statement. I wish we had a copy of your statement. Uh, yeah, yeah, Matt. Uh, that was more beneficial to get a good overview of the pluses, minuses, and all of the tugs and all of that in this particular uh, item than all the stacks of paper and emails that we got. Uh, we tried as staff to put together a, a thoughtful, although long staff memorandum that you know tried to address the pros and cons and give you yeah. a clean TikTok so you were able to make sense of some of the correspondence that you received. Uh, I'd like to have had time to think about it uh, ahead of time, but at any rate, I don't think the outcome would have been any different, but it sure would have saved a lot of guesswork and but anyway thank you so much for that and to all the staff my pleasure absolutely any other business for this evening or any other staff reports great i'm going to thank you all for your time this meeting is adjourned Yay.